everyone, come on in. It is one o'clock Eastern time. You know what that means. Soulful Saturday, y'all. Soulful Saturday, and I'm looking for my girls. So, come on down. Here we go. Here we go. Here comes some. Good to see everyone. Thanks for showing up. I don't know what I did with all my... Of course, I don't have one water bottle here. Can you believe that? There's Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Tracy. Good to see you. And Amy's in the house. Happy Saturday, everyone. It's party time. We're going to have a pajama party tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What next? What next? How's everyone doing? Huh? How is everyone doing? There's Cindy. I see Cindy. And there's Vanessa. I'm going to see you shortly, Vanessa. There's Lucy, too. Yay. Lucy's in the house. Vanessa's in the house. Pajama party. Why not? That's what I say. Why not? And I realize that I have everything backwards again. I'm sorry, you guys. This uh, dark hair is kind of getting on my last nerve. It is a warm, warm, warm day today. Yes, 7 Eastern. Joanne, are you going to show up? I hope so. I hope everybody has their jammies. Lucy, you going to show up? I'm looking for all of you. We have a new quote of the week, you guys. Are you ready for that? A new quote. And thanks for the hearts. I could use some hearts right now. <laughs> Jamma just got done. Jamma's just got done from a walk in the country. That's a really good idea. I live in the country. You know, I have to tell you, one of my biggest fears of walking around here, I hear there's a beautiful waterfall around here somewhere that's private that I can walk on. But, you know, there's I've seen bears <laughs> walking through this property and I'm thinking, what do I do if I come you know, face to face with a bear. And this is, this is the time of year. So I don't know that that's kind of a, you know, maybe that's a weird fear factor. I don't know. Hi, Angela and Gwen. Welcome. Come on in. Come on in. All right. Today's quote is a good, it's a Wayne Dyer quote, which I couldn't, you know, pick a better person to have a quote from. And it's this, you cannot always control what happens outside but you can always control what happens inside. Mm. <laughs> How appropriate, right? How appropriate. Hi, Yolanda and Kathy. Good to see you. Two Kathys. You know, we can't. I don't know about you, but there's just, there's a lot out there that I can't control. What I can control is my own house. What I can control is what's in my head. What I can control has nothing to do with what's out there, has nothing to do with what the prognosticators are saying. It has everything to do with what's happening right here and right there in your home. This is where we are. And um, I'm going to talk to that. I've got four C's of talking about how we decorate. <laughs> and believe me, this, yes, it's a massive ma <laughs> metaphor. So, you know, here we go. But first, I wanted to tell you that, by the way, I've been having, I had a couple of nice, really sweet uh, messages from you, a couple of people who said that they really appreciated the webinar that I did on Thursday. If you want to take a look at it, go take a look at it. Um, it's still up. You can go see it. It's at savingdinner.com forward slash webinar. It's free. It might help you in these times of what's going on, because aren't we all there? I know we are. We still have plenty of glycozyme. Glycozyme is our digestive enzyme that has also sugar um, reducing properties, right? So this helps with sugar issues. So if you have a hard time with insulin resistance or whatever, this is just the thing for you. And we've got a plenty of it still. We have plenty of it in the shop. If you put that in your cart and write ships free, ships free in the little... Uh, window there, guess what? Your whole order will be free. And by the way, chocolate, um, perfect paleo protein, and what else is it? Uh, Fiber Mender uh, 3.0, I think 4.0 even, is going to be here on Monday. I am so excited. And I'm going to have a sale for you. Believe me, I'm going to have a sale. 
But in the meantime, you know what? Support Saving Dinner. Go get your go get what we have. <laughs> SAME will be in the store too. I, you bought the glycozyme? That stuff is the bomb. I've been I've actually switched over to it because I really like it. I think it's fantastic. Anyway, um, yeah, go save, support Saving Dinner. And if you want to, I've also had a couple of people say, you know, times are rough. And they've noticed that on some people's Facebook page, they have be, become a supporter. Well, we don't have that on ours. We don't have be a supporter on ours. They, I guess we haven't reached that point of having enough Facebook fans or whatever. I don't know, but whatever. So you want to know how you can support Saving Dinner? Go become a subscriber. Yeah, it's seven dollars, but guess what? Not only is it it might be a little bit more than becoming a subscriber for four ninety nine a month or whatever it is, but you're gonna get menus, recipes, and shopping lists the way you eat every single week delivered to your inbox. So that's pretty exciting. That is pretty exciting. So I want you to have that. That is my gift to you. We have lowered the price the first time ever in our history to $7 a month, just $7 a month. It used to be 10. So you wanna know how to support Saving Dinner? There it is. Go to savingdinner.com, become a subscriber to Dinner Answers, and you will become a supporter, and we will in turn turn around and make sure that you are taken care of every single week. That's how we roll, that's how it works. Tonight's our pajama party right here, 7 p.m. Are you gonna come? I don't know what cute pajamas I'm going to wear, but I'm going to figure it out. Bring your favorite beverage, bring your favorite friend, bring a pillow. And you know what? We're just going to hang out. We're going to talk. We're going to do things. It is a girl time. Unfortunately, Facebook doesn't make it as fun as they used to, where we used to be able to bring people on. But if you're, you know, content to just talk to me, I'll be talking to you. You know, I will talk. You know me, blah, blah, blah. I can talk. <laughs> uh, virtual full bloom because we have to do it this way simply because of other things in the universe, you know what I'm talking about, will be April 18th. All that information will be coming in, an, in, an, in your inbox. So t make sure you watch for it because it's going to be a really neat event. Full Bloom is about living your legacy now, having a fully bloomed life. What do you think of that idea? I think it's time, ladies. It's time. That's who we are. What else do I have to tell you? virtual full bloom. Yeah. And then the other one, the real one is tentatively set for April or uh, October 8th and 9th, I think it is. But I'm seeing people saying that you can't even get into the, I might change the time. So just that's not in stone. Let's not in stone. If I, if I have to, I, I'm going to just listen to my folks. If you guys can't get hotel rooms, then what's the point, right? Let's, we'll back it up. We'll do it in late September or something. We'll figure it out. You good with me on that? I don't want to miss a single one of you. I want you all here. Bring my chickens in. Amy said the sunset is booked. Dang, that's our favorite hotel too. It's so cute. Let me see what I can find out. I'm going to give them a call today and see if I can find out. But I want you there, Amy. Yeah, and you know, the other thing that we, you can do too is, there, is like put a, together your posse and get an Airbnb. There's still a bunch of those around. All right. You ready to talk? Who wants to get down into some soul stuff? Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot because, you know, this is the bombardment uh, on television and everybody's talking about this. And I don't, I'm not even going to mention the word. Um, just, I'm so tired of it. I am so tired of it. We might be inside and what have you, but we can walk outside. And yes, and I saw Tracy said that she went outside and saw there was a bobcat in her driveway. I think I'll <laughs> I think I'll pass on my waterfall trek for right now until I get some bear repellent or some I don't know something to keep the critters away but this is a sanctuary around here so I think I'm going to be careful. But right now because of everything that is going on the the right now the cocooning of your your mind, your heart, your soul and even your body is so critically important falling off into the deep end and just feeling like you're just falling 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 is a really easy thing to do right now and um it's easy you know 
there's there's going to be some weather in the middle of the country too and i'm thinking okay when it when are the locusts coming next i mean it's just you know there's some epic stuff going on right now and uh you know if you want to go into exodus and go read you know what the jews went through the plagues and the locusts and the blood and the frogs and all of that stuff it's just wow <laughs> there's a lot but it's so important right now for us to do things that are going to create peace in our in our lives we need peace in our lives we need peace and calm and sweetness and love and all the good things that you can think of that's the blessing that we need right now that's the stuff that we need to be looking for and so what i'm looking at is that this is an opportunity to set yourself up and this is why i said it's how you decorate your house well if we look at our house as being our body is that is a house you know i mean the the the, the book of of I, well, I don't even know exactly where it is i think it's in the psalms it says that this is our body is our temple right so if this is the case, we have the outside of it and we have the inside of it. And when we feed the outside, the inside of it well, the outside follows suit, right? But we also, when we have our homes, we, we look at our homes, that everything around us, what do we do with our homes once we get it all decluttered and everything? We decorate, right? We go through and we decide, you know, that old couch needs a change. We put some new throw pillows on it, maybe a little blankie, a little throw there. We decorate, we put things out, we hang things on the wall. And it's all to our liking. We don't do something that we don't like. We don't ever say, oh, well, that's a perfectly good picture. I think I'll put it on the wall because it's a perfectly good picture. But every time you look at it, you go, mm, I just don't like that. It's just not mine. And it's not that maybe the picture isn't a pretty picture. It's not to your taste. So we're very individual. And we need to know that individuality, that individuality rings true all the way through. What your house looks like, what my house looks like, what is, when I eat, what I like to eat, what I, what you like to eat. Uh, think about all the individuality that's there and the creativity that's there. So when I look at this, I think, uh, how is it then that we lead and live our lives in this time of just really upheaval? It is. It is a huge upheaval. And I came up with four C's, create, cultivate, curate, and cure. And let's go through all of these. The first thing that we need to do is create. And this is the fun part. You know, this is where the imagination flows. This is where we get to look and, and pick and choose and see things and say, this is beautiful. Everything you've been, everything that you can see is, 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 is individual. Again, it's back to that individuality because when you can choose things that absolutely ring your little bells, doesn't it just make, bring sparked joy as, as Marie Kondo would say? But it does. Because when you have something in place and you hang something up and you arrange the pillows and you fluff them up and you put the, you know, your little things out in the books that you love and candles and all of that, you create this beautiful place that you live and it feels like you. We get to do that in our heads too. We get to do that with our food. We get to do that with the thoughts that we think. We get to do that with the things that we meditate about, how we pray, all of it. We get to do that. And I think our biggest thing is, is that we just need to create this vision. What is the vision that we have for ourselves? And the vision that we have for ourselves is the thing that carries us in to the rest of what it is that we're trying to do. Because we're always trying to create a vision that's personal, that's individual, that's a custom thing. And our custom visions should light us up. The food that we're eating should light us up. And the food that we're eating should also take care of our bodies in a very real and substantial way and not mess them up. 
and the things that we're listening to, the things that we're seeing, the things that we're hearing, beautiful music, reading beautiful poetry and, and words that just, that are imaginative. I've been reading poetry lately because it's really been soothing. I don't usually read poetry. Right now I'm reading it and going, yes, oh yes, this soothes my soul. So those are things that we have to do. This creation is our vision and that vision helps to set the scene of what it is that we want. And then we have to cultivate it. And think about what does cultivation mean anyway? When you're cultivating a garden, you're constantly going through the garden and you're weed, taking out the weeds and you're looking and even having to space the plants. Maybe there's just too much. Maybe you have a, you know, a bed that has way too many throw pillows on it. Men will always say any throw pillows are too much, right? They just don't like them. They just want, they just want utility and we're always fluffing things up and, and making things beautiful. We decorate. And when we cultivate, well, that's kind of the work. That's where we, we're, we're creating, um, we're doing the work. We're taking out what we don't want. We're decluttering. We're, we're making, we're cultivating the vision that we have. And when we know it's just right, we'll just, you know, we'll arrange and do things and we'll say it's just right. And that's how we have to do with ourselves. We read, we write, we pray, we meditate, and we think of wise things. We have, you know, we have wonderful sayings and, and quotes, sorry, it's backwards, <laughs> all around our house so that we're reminded continually to cultivate this culture of love and this vision of what it is that we want for our lives every, in every single way. And when we do that, then that's going to press out the other stuff. That's going to squeeze out the other stuff that's out there. And then at that point, we have to curate and we choose. We pick and we choose. If you go to a museum, and I used to go to uh, a museum all the time, you know, in Boulder, they had this, they had a nice museum there and we'd go there and they would have different shows. And what they did with, in museums is they would curate, a, a, you know, a, a, an art exhibit and they choose what's going to go on this wall over here and what's going to have this light on it over there and everything so that you can get the maximum effect of how things should look. And we do that at, in our own homes too, maybe not to the degree that a museum does, but we will, you see behind me, I've got those two pictures. I've got two more pictures that are going to go, be going up, but they're all artwork from my books. They, I, I like them in here, but I wouldn't want them in my living room, but I love them in my office because this is part of the work that I do. And it reminds me, you know, the supplements over here and the artwork from the books that I write and that I'm a nutritionist and this is it reminds me of what it is that I do and that my work is important. It's mission, it's mission oriented for me, but downstairs, when you go look and see the artwork downstairs and you see um, the mirrors on the walls, everything, I can tell you a story pretty much about everything that's on there. And it's pleasing to me. It's calming to me. And I've cultivated and curated this whole calm place because that's what I need. I need a calm peaceful environment to live in and clutter doesn't work for me um, having some a bunch of colors that I don't like don't work for me so I have things in there that absolutely 100% work it, perfection no but curated to build the vision that I have which is a peaceful calm place you want visual peace visual peace creates inner peace that I know that um, I know that's exactly what it is. And I, you know, I, I gave you a little bit of a tour on, I think it was Thursday of my home. You can watch it here. And I showed you, this is my living room and this is my view out the door and this is my kitchen. And I gave you a little bit of a tour. Um, that's, I created that for me, not for you, but I created that the, my home to look the way it was. And yes, I used what I had and I didn't go out and purposely buy anything but you understand what I'm saying. We can do that so much so with ourselves, with what it is that we are consuming visually in our ear, what we're hearing, what we're eating, everything. 
everything needs to be curated, everything. And then there's sometimes we need a cure. This is the fourth C. We need a cure because it's just not working. And you look at something and you pick out where, where's the place that it's, that it's not working. What's causing me distress right now? Is it too much news? Is it too much sugar? Is it too much wine? Is it too much listening to people or watching, reading stuff on Facebook that's just, that's filling you full of misinformation and going back and forth? What is it that's out of place? You can cure it by finding it and removing it. And that's what we need. We have to choose with deliberate action the things that we want to keep within our environment. And our insides are dependent on it. Our mindset is dependent on it. Our peace is completely 100% dependent on it. You have the opportunity at any moment to turn it off and to turn it on, to flip on the switch or turn it off or flip the switch down. And I want for you to have peace, extraordinary peace in this unturbulent time because you can choose it at any time. And I will tell you, if you're not using, there's three tools that I highly recommend, journaling, meditation, and prayer. When you use those three things, then you're aligning yourself with God. You're aligning yourself with yourself and your spirit. And you're also, when you meditate, you are, believe it or not, you are, are still aligning with God. And you're also med- you're aligning with your own spirit and you're bringing your, your, your stress factor way, way down. You know, our bodies need to be treated with the utmost of respect. You know, we are wonderfully made, wonderfully made and unique and and everything is connected. So when we are letting ourselves see just anything, when we are subjecting ourselves to stress after stress after stress, and that even includes movies. That even includes, you know, I, we tried to watch a comic the other night. His mouth was so foul. I was just like, you know, I give up. Maybe he's funny, but I, you know, I can't get past the foul language too much. You know, not that I'm a princess and I, you know, oh my goodness, my ears are burning. I can't hear it. I'm not, it's not that. It's just like, what's the point here? You know, if we elevate the level of the things that we listen to, the things that we're watching and the things that we're eating and the people that we're hanging out with, even if it's on FaceTime or whatever, I think we're going to notice that we are being able to curate and create in our lives the peace that we all so desperately want. But it's deliberate and it starts with your own vision and it works to cultivate and work that garden of yours. And then you have to curate and select exactly what's going to be coming in. And then you have to cure anything that's standing out like a sore thumb because it will. But peace can be ours even in all of this. It can be ours. We just have to make that choice. Always a choice. Isn't that so good though? To know that we have that control. I, I'll tell you what. I need that right now more than anything. And I know you do too. So today at 4 p.m., I'm supposed to be doing a cooking lesson and I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to be doing. None whatsoever. So show up at 4 p.m. anyway for a surprise. (laughs) Who knows? And if you have an idea of something that you would like to see me cook or a skill you want to learn or something, do send them in. Send them in to support at savingdinner.com and say, Leanne, can you show me how to do X, Y, Z? That's fine. I will help you because that's what the cooking lessons are all about at 4 p.m. every day right here in our Facebook on Saving Dinner Facebook. Secondly, if you want your nutrition question answered or you have a cooking question or a food question or something, every Friday I do a and a right here 1 p.m. Um, on our Facebook page. And all you have to do to send that in is support at savingdinner.com. And in the subject line, question for Leanne on Friday, I will answer it. All right? So I appreciate you all showing up for me. And just remember that you have 
an absolute choice on all of this. And what you think about expands. So keep your precious thoughts on beautiful things. You're worth that beautiful things. Okay? Beautiful things. I love it. Peace out, you guys. You're the best. I love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.